Hi, this is Dr. Jay Smith here in my office with my books behind me in the United States. Today is Sunday, September the 13th, 2020. And I'm rather saddened because of what has happened to my colleague and friend, Hatun Tosh, uh, there in England earlier this afternoon at Speaker's Corner in London. Hatuntosh has regularly been going down to the corner, and today, for the first time, that in, I, in my memory that I've known of, she, she had to be escorted out of the corner, surrounded by Muslims that were yelling at her and screaming at her, full of hateful things towards her. Now, you might say, okay, she deserved it because she is very provocative and Hatun is very provocative. Hatun is one of the few I know that is able to stand her ground. Here is this one little woman. She's just a little over five foot tall. And yet she stood up against all these men for over an hour. I've only seen what Soko Films has filmed and they only filmed about, a, about an hour's worth. You can go up on Soko Films and see what happened this afternoon there at the corner. And I would encourage you to do that because I think you need to see the whole film to understand the context. Hatun Tosh has been going to Speaker's Corner for years. Uh, she started going, I think, in about 2013, maybe 2014. I was on the ladder at that time, and she came and joined me on the ladder. And up until 2017, she would be the one that was on the ladder more than anybody else. And we were always trained that we always stick to the subject, never waffle, never go off, never let the Muslims control the subject, always maintain control of the argument, and always make sure that Islam is put onto its back foot and that the, the Bible is defended, that the Quran is confronted, that Jesus is defended, and Muhammad is confronted. We do that all the time. And the reason why is because Speaker's Corner is really the only place you can do that. It's the last bastion of freedom of speech. And this is what I want to talk about tonight. This is the last bastion that I know of anywhere in the world where you can say anything you want and you can confront Islam at its foundations, which Hatun has been doing. She did it with me for three years, and for the last three years, she's been doing it by herself, surrounded by her team, some of whom were there this afternoon, earlier. But there has been a particular hatred for Hatun more than anybody else. And the reason, I think, goes back to four years ago when she and I held up 26 of her Qurans, Qurans that she had been able to accumulate from different countries, and showed that every one of these Qurans were different. Every one of them, in Arabic, had differences. And that there were about 30 official ones that we've now found out. These are known as the Qiraat or the Ahruf. Muhammad Hijab was in the audience at that time, and so he called all the Muslims to leave the ladder where we were at, uh, showing some of the differences to the Muslims that were curious. Uh, he, he didn't know what to do with this material. He'd never seen this before. And he certainly did not want other Muslims to see what we were saying. That was four years ago, 2016. We're now in 2020. And you all know what happened on June 8th. On June 8th, the same Muhammad Hijab went and he asked Yasser Qadi, Dr. Yasser Qadi, probably one of the most influential Muslims uh, in the United States today, about these different Qurans. And he wanted to know what was his response. And his response is, we don't ask questions like this. We do not bring this up in the pro in, in public. This is one of the most difficult questions that the narrative of Islam, the narrative on, these Quran, on the Quran, on these problems, has holes in it. And that's where the phrase, the stock phrase that has been used now, the narrative has holes in it. What he's really saying is that the Quran has holes in it. There are many holes in the Quran. Not just this, but this is probably the most difficult for Muslims to respond to because every Muslim, every Muslim, doesn't matter whether they are radical or nominal or liberal, that every Muslim has been told that the Quran has always been one, that it has never changed, that every word, every letter, even some would say even every dot and every vowel is exactly the same in the Quran that we have today, this one here, the Hafs Quran, as that which was revealed to Muhammad between 610 and 632, which was 
written down by Zaid ibn Tabid in 632 to 634, then rewritten a second time in 652 under the authority of Uthman. And so that this Quran that I have in my hand today is exactly like that. And you've heard me say this many times before. This is nothing new. Now here suddenly in this interview on June 8th, Yasser Qadi finally had to admit, after 25 minutes of not wanting to answer the question, which Quran, which of these 30 different Qurans, would it be the Hafs, would it be the Kib, Ibn uh, Kathir, would it be Kaluns, would it be Warsh, which one of these Qurans is the one that was revealed to Muhammad, which is the one that was then written by Uthman, and his response was, they're all the Quran, all 30 of them. Now that happened on June 8th, so just three months ago. Hatun immediately went down to the, uh, the corner. Every Sunday she took a Quran with her. Every Sunday she would hold up that Quran and ask question after question after question. What about these holes in your narrative? What about the holes in your Quran? Finally, she even drilled holes into the Quran. And I'm going to show you two around. Look at these right there. She's holding it up. That is the problem. And people who follow this book are putting the human life in danger. So she held up the Quran with holes in it. Highly offensive to Muslims. Yes, this is highly offensive. It's just like what David Wood did a few weeks ago by tearing some of the pages out, putting it in his mouth, chewing it, and then spitting it out. That's highly offensive to Muslims. As offensive as burning Qurans, which is exactly what Uthman did. He burned all the Qurans that disagreed in 652. That's in Al-Buhari. Sorry, Sahih Al-Buhari. Volume 6, Hadith number 510. So it's nothing any different than what Muslims have done to their Quran whenever there was disagreement or there were holes in it or there are things that they could not defend. Hatun then brought down this Quran with holes in it and every Sunday in the last five weeks she has been harassed, she has been harangued and understandably the Muslims are upset with her because nobody, nobody desecrates the Quran. But see, Hutton was doing that for not for two reasons. One is well, right. that she was the one that really instigated this whole de de debate. We would not have this problem. We would not have the problem with the holes in the narrative without Hutton. Hutton is the one that really initiated it. Secondly, she knows that only at Speaker's Corner can you really push their buttons on this issue. Only at Speaker's Corner can you really show a Quran with holes in it. Only at Speaker's Corner can you really confront Muhammad with the cartoons by Charlie Hebdo. And that's exactly what she did today. Take a look at here. Look at what she did with the Quran. Let's look at this one first. Quran. That is the problem. That is the problem. And people who follow this book are putting the human life in danger as well as, as, well as life of child. Now look and see what she did with Muhammad and notice what she is saying about Muhammad. To follow the teachings of this I will, I will, man, dangerous. I if I become a Muslim, I have to follow the teachings of this man, dangerous. If I become a Muslim, I have to follow the teachings of this man, dangerous. If I become a Muslim, I have to follow this man, dangerous. And this man, dangerous. Why you touch the children? Why you touch the children? Why you rape the children? So Hatun has dared to cross the line because she has dared to hold up these caricatures of Muhammad and dared to ask the question, look at this man, look at this book and see what it does to you. And then she applies it and she gives the application and she talks about these many women who have been raped and molested there in the UK. Here's what she says. Okay, to go and have sex with the children, and in England, they have done that to approximately approximate 300,000 white girls, because what they have profited, and now they are criticizing Christian faith. Do you see the hypocrisy? That's called the religion of Islam. That's called the religion of Islam. So she has gone to the Quran, she has gone to Muhammad, which is something we are asked to do. This is something
something I taught her to do. This is something we have been doing. Uh, we used to do this. We've been doing it for years now. We always go to the Quran. We always go to Muhammad. We always go to Allah. And then we give some application, usually in the traditions, to support what we're saying. We always source what we say. And she sourced what she said as well. Look and see where she sourced it. Here we go. I am offended when your ideology calls me worst of creatures. I am offended when your ideology calls me to be abused because of my dress code. I am offended when your ideology tells me I should be killed because of my belief. Do you want to ask me a question? No. So I am being offended. Oh, Prophet, tell your wives and your daughters and the women of the believers to bring down over themselves of their outer garments. That is more suitable for them that they will be known and not to be abused. I never kidnapped people, Muhammad did. I never robbed a caravan, Muhammad did. But you still love Muhammad, you don't love me. So everything Hatun did today at Speaker's Corner is what exactly Speaker's Corner is all about. This is the only place that we that has left us where we can question the Quran, where we can question Muhammad, where we can, yes, hold up Qurans with holes in them, and we can hold up these Charlie Hebdo covers. These are all covers of the Charlie Hebdo magazine uh, that has caused such a, a anger to Muslims around the world, and so much so that the editors and those who were in the office were all killed for those covers. But we can still do that at Speaker's Corner because we can still ask the question, what is it about your prophet and what is it about your book that causes such anger and violence and hatred around the world? And so that's what she did today. There's nothing that I could see in that 50 minutes, 55 minutes, that is not something that she has not done before. There's nothing that she hasn't done before or something that I haven't done before. We've all done it. For 25 years that I was at Speaker's Corner, I asked the very same questions. I confronted the very same categories. I used the same kind of... I did not use a Quran with holes in it. I did not do that. I didn't burn any Qurans, and I didn't certainly eat any pages and spit them out. That, maybe that's the tactic that caused, that caused all this anger, but I don't think it is. I think what's really causing the anger, how could one little woman, not just little or five feet tall, cause so much anger, so much anger, that they had her to have her evicted? Hatun came to the corner today to ask really one question. She wanted to find from Muslims, how is it that in your Quran, in chapter 7, verse 157, it says very clearly that Muhammad could be found in both the Taurat and the Injil. That means both in the Old and New Testaments. So, where is Muhammad in the Old and New Testament? That's a perfectly legitimate question to ask. And she asked it over and over and over again. Look at, just look at all these many different times. According to Surah 7, verse 157. Did you have Surah 7? Surah 7, verse 157. Muhammad is prophesied in the Bible. My question is, where is it Muhammad prophesied in the Bible? Those who which follow the messenger, the unlettered prophet, whom they which find written in what they have of the Torah book? and yes. of the gospel. Can, me, can, can you tell me? Can you tell me? According to the Quran, the prophet is supposed to be, the is supposed to be prophesied in the Bible. Where is it Muhammad prophesied? It is prophesied in the Torah and in the gospel. The question is, where is it in the Torah and in the gospel Muhammad is prophesied? If Muhammad is not prophesied in the Torah and in the gospel, that shows Islam is false. Religion, Muhammad is false prophet, Quran is false book. Now, can I get the reference in the Torah and in the gospel? I'm still waiting for the reference. So today, we saw something that really saddens me, upsets me. We saw Speaker's Corner reduced to a lot of hatred. Not by Hatun. There's nothing that I can see that was hatred. She is allowed to, per, to confront the Prophet Muhammad. She is permitted to confront the Quran. She is permitted to source what she is saying. She is permitted to talk about the difficulties that Islamic community is having here in Britain and even give the source where that why where these difficulties come from she talked to a woman for for quite a lengthy amount of time about the hijab and then the woman just said why do you have holes in my quran that is absolutely full of hatred and the woman walked away after saying that so there is an anger 
by the Muslims. But I, I want you to watch these minutes now. I'm going to show you them because they go for about, oh, about 15, 12 to 15 minutes. And I want you to watch the crowd and look at the crowd and then look at the police as they try to protect Hatun. And then as Hatun is being let out, what's the thing she asks for more than anything else? What's the one request she asks of the police? You watch. I 
Well, my sure wallet here. Oh, I'm not bro. There's no one is, Aki. She's an agent, Aki. She's every day, week in, week out, yeah? She's yeah. No, 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 Aki. She put a picture of, you know, of the cartoon Prophet Muhammad. Yeah. And she was like, oh, look, this is your prophet. Your prophet is this. Your prophet is that. And she put a hole in the Quran, innit? She went, your Quran is a. Your Allah is this. Bro, Aki, this woman has gone next level, Aki. What, Yeah, Hatun, bro. Yeah, okay, Aki, she's the next level. She's like the new turn now, literally. Allah, it's dangerous, Aki, this woman. And the last thing that the man says is this woman is dangerous. <laughs> a woman hardly over five feet is dangerous. Why is she so dangerous? What is it that's so dangerous about Hatun? Where is this hatred they're all talking about? I didn't see anything that was hatred and other than the fact that she was holding up a book with holes in it. If you define that as hatred, then I would suggest that you don't understand what caricature is all about. If talking and holding up those covers from Charlie Hebdo magazine is hatred, then we're doomed. Because we can all, we've already seen what happens to those who have done that there in Paris. If we're forcing people to come back to the holes in the narrative, forcing people to come back to these problems with the different Qurans, is forcing the people to come back and deal with chapter 7, verse 157, and show that there's nothing in the Bible about Muhammad, which then shows that this is false, proving that Muhammad is a false prophet. That's really all that she was saying. She kept on repeating that throughout the, e the afternoon. If that is the problem here, then I think Muslims have an awful lot to answer for, but I don't think that's the problem. I think the real problem is Muslims do not know how to deal with free speech. Muslims do not know how to deal with hard-hitting questions. Muslims are not used to being confronted by such a small woman, such a frail woman. She had to have her Christian brothers around her to protect her. Just really, I only saw two or three of them, that's all. One black, one white. They were the brothers that were there to protect her against this crowd that was baying and yelling, chanting against her. And as they led her away, did you notice they were yelling, Takbir, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. They were going into their chants. They were having victory. And see, this is what Islam's all about. They only know power. And they can only use that power in the context of violence. And if they can't do it, they'll make sure the police do it for them. They were hiding behind the police today. They were hiding behind the police today. But those of us who are watching that, I hope you pick it up, for me especially, this is a bad day. This is a sad day for Speaker's Corner. This is a bad day. This is a sad day for freedom of speech. If the police cannot protect our freedom of speech, at the one institution that's the bastion for freedom of speech and has been so for 160 years, Speaker's Corner is known as the one place where you can say anything you want. You can deny the Holocaust there. Yes, you can. You can even slag off the Queen there. That's the one place you're allowed to do it. And here is one little woman who happened to come across a real hole in the narrative of Islam 26 Qurans, now it's up to 37, that do not agree with each other, showing that there are many different Qurans, all written between the 8th and 10th century. And they could not let her stay at the corner. They had to surround her, they had to throw hate and vitriol at her, and the police finally had to come in and protect her. I asked you to listen to how she responded. Now she, they were hurting her arm and she talked about her arm, but what was the thing she kept on repeating? What about my Christian brothers? Don't worry about me. I want to make sure that my Christian brothers were okay. She was more concerned for her Christian brothers than she was for herself. <laughs> Bless her. That's so typical of Hatu. Listen, I've known her for about eight years now. I know her well. I've been on her team. I've been her teammate. I've been her leader. I've uh, driven her home many times, had long talks, theological discussions with her. I've been on the ladder with her for three years. I know exactly how Hatun thinks. And this is typical of Hatun. This is typical. She doesn't really care about herself. 
she knows and she said it many times that they will probably finally kill her she's been beaten up she's had ribs broken she's had her foot broken she's almost had her neck broken uh, from being hanged and I know that Hatun will want to go back to Speaker's Corner again and maybe they'll let her go back but what's really s sad for me today is after seeing all that and realizing that the police had to come to protect her and the others that were there what really got hurt today was not Hatun and was not the Christian brothers what really got hurt today what really I think got wounded was our capacity to confront that which needs confronting this book does need confronting Muhammad does need confronting Allah does need confronting Islam needs confronting and Muslims need confronting and they need to grow up and stop acting like bullies what I saw today was bullying at its worst the police were between a rock and a hard place they've already gone to her house a number of weeks back and asked her not to come to speaker's corner because they could not promise her that they could protect her even the police cannot protect little Hatun <laughs> folks you need to write in you need to get angry and you need to say this is enough Islam you need to shut your bullies up you need to grow up and you need to live in the 21st century this is not a Muslim country. Britain is not a Muslim country. London is not a Muslim city. Islamic law does not rule in the UK. And Speaker's Corner is not your territory. And if this is the only place, the one place left us to be able to critique your prophet, critique your Quran, and yes, critique Islam, if, you gonna, if the only answer you have is to bully little girls like that, little women like that, then that says something about Islam at its very core. Islam cannot protect its Quran. It cannot protect its prophet. And it cannot protect its God without shutting down all speech, anything that stands against everything they believe. And I thank God we don't have that problem with the Bible. I thank God that we don't have to yell these kind of chants against Muslims whenever they criticize our Bible, and they do. Oh, they've said many things against our Bible, many things against Jesus Christ, many things against our Lord. They're always confronting us. Do we ever chant like you saw there? We don't need that kind of protection. We do not need to hide behind the police. We do not need to bully or to harass or to use vitriol against anybody because we have a great Lord. We've got a great Bible. We've got a great person of Jesus Christ. What a man. What a God to come back to. Folks, Hatun has shown us today that the second largest religion in the world, growing faster than any other religion, cannot defend itself, cannot defend its word, cannot defend its prophet cannot defend its God. You saw that vividly in what you just looked at. I thank God that our God and our Lord and our Savior and His Gospel is not that weak. And I ask every one of you Muslims, I hope you're not proud of what you saw today. I hope you're not looking at that and saying, ah, finally, we have got rid of that woman. I think you need to look deep into your hearts. I need you to look deep into your souls. And I think you need to ask yourself, is this a worthy prophet? Is this a worthy book? And is this a worthy faith to defend? It looks like those of the crowd could not defend it. They had to use the police. It looks like the only way they can shut Hatun up is by attacking her verbally and by attacking her physically and forcing her to retreat. Thank God we don't have that problem. Muslims, I hope you are disillusioned by what you saw, but don't give up. Come on home. Come on home to Jesus Christ. Listen, I, every time I talk about him, I have a smile on my face because he is so worthy to talk about. He's so worthy to defend. He is so easy to defend. 
And you don't have to do a thing except accept what he did for you on the cross. Did you notice Hatun put that into her? Last thing she said before they pulled her away was you need to come home to Jesus Christ. Look and see what he did on the cross for you. Accept that he has already paid the price. Accept that he died and rose again so that you can be with him for eternity. Muslims, come on home. Come on home. Stop following this book. Stop following the man behind this book and stop following the God behind this book and come to the bigger, the better book, the book that I have in this hand here. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. You need to come home. I think you can see, if this is all you can put up, this is all you can do against a little woman there at Speaker's Corner, if that's the religion you want to follow, then I would suggest you're following the wrong faith, the wrong God, the wrong prophet, the wrong book. And we've got him. Come on home. I am saddened, but Hatun's not down or defeated. She'll be back again, and you'll be seeing her on DCCI, go up on DCCI and yet YouTube. Look how resilient she is. She'll bounce right back. That's our Hatu. God bless you. It's been a sad day, but in some ways, maybe we're seeing the true colors. We're seeing the real Islam. We're seeing how weak Islam really is and how strong we are as Christians. God bless you. This is Jay here in my office. Over and out.